I am a real estate developer. I run my own business. I've got many different hats on during the day and uh, tons of different projects that I'm working on. So I found that, and I love the variety, and I love everything that I do about my job. The problem was is every time the phone would ring, I would get distracted and move on to a different job. And I wasn't pushing my deliverables along in a timely fashion. So I started to think about how can I bound my, my, uh, my time to concentrate on one particular job and push that through, whether it's for four hours or a whole day or whatever the case may be. And uh, so my experiment was to, you know, if I've got five different jobs going on, let's say I can, I can just dedicate one day of each week to that particular job and move it along. I wasn't successful in that. My, the constraints of my time didn't allow for it, but I was able to bound it into periods of like three or four hours. So I could spend a whole morning on one project um, and just make sure that when I'm, I'm loading up my calendar for the following week that, you know, the, the engineers that I'm talking to or the attorneys or uh, if I'm meeting with, uh, with, with neighbors around a job that we're going to be building, those things are all happening on a given day or a given morning or a given afternoon or a given evening. The killer thing that uh, it, uh, it distracts my life is, you know, the infamous BlackBerry, and one of the bounding experiments that I had was, you know, I get called and interrupted, and I just noticed that as I was interacting with my employees, I wasn't connecting with them. And even though we were speaking, their impression was, well, Rich has got five million things going on. The BlackBerry is going off. He's not paying any attention to me. And so I spent a lot of time really trying to make that communication process efficient so that they walked away going, my boss really cares about what I'm doing. And it was an overall net positive takeaway. I kind of looked at my life before, before this class in buckets. So I had my family bucket. I had my work bucket. I had my school bucket. And I had my stuff around the house and just generally living. And one of the experiments I did was to actually put all that for the first time on one piece of paper. And my stress level went like this. Because instead of feeling like there was always some bucket that was out of control, what I knew at any given time was that I had prioritized all of them. And I did something simple like high, medium, and low priority in each of those four things. I have it on one single sheet of paper. And I would sit down every Sunday during the entire length of the course and still today and update it. And I knew that during this week, if it wasn't on the list, it probably wasn't that important. And I could then just say, you know what, I'm just taking a time with my wife, or I'm taking time with my family, and I'm done. So that was an experiment that, that worked very well for me. So one of the big ones for me was to um, try and exercise regularly and just improve my physical, my physical health. I used to chain smoke cigars. I still do a little bit, but not as much. Um, and given my industry would go out frequently, uh, and really had no exercise program. So I really made it uh, part of my week. And so now a year later, I'm about to do, in a couple more months, my first triathlon. And it's really become not only important for my physical health, but now I've been able to work it in as far as my community and raising money through doing marathons for various events, as well as... Uh, you'd be surprised how many people want to have meetings at the gym. And so I've actually been able to, like, you know, schedule meetings with potential clients where we wind up working out together. And it's worked out perfectly. I'm going to answer your question in terms of the experiment, but I think the whole process itself was transformation, just a different way of looking at your life. Um, but I'll give you an example of an experiment. So I had a lot of guilt that this is one of the things this class helps you with is you, you hit the nail on the head with that one, I thought. Um, I had a lot of guilt that m I felt that my mother really felt offended that I would sit on the BlackBerry when she's talking to me. So I'd be on the BlackBerry and I never ever gave her dedicated attention. And she, whenever she tried to talk to me, I'd be on the computer, you know, multitasking, we all do it. So it was time to have stakeholder dialogues, right? One of the, one of the big ones you really don't want to have to have is with your parents because you figure <laughs> I, I did I stopped doing that many many years ago but you really want to help them make them happy and you don't want to feel guilty so that was very I think that was a, probably my hardest stakeholder dialogue well I had a discussion with my family and they all laughed at me they said that that's ridiculous you've always been doing a thousand things at the same time if you didn't if you weren't on the Blackberry when you were talking to us we would think something is wrong and then all of a sudden they said, well, it would be nice, though, if you would feed the dog. <laughs> so I said, 
I said, feed the dog. I had no clue. I had no idea whatsoever. That, but because of the way we had structured the dialogue, they felt comfortable raising something they had never, ever mentioned before. So one of my experiments was to feed the dog. Now, how did that change my life? Because if you, as I mentioned, if you get so wrapped up in, in work and doing all these things and you never make time for yourself, then you don't, you don't learn to stop. You know, you don't learn to take a hard break and say it's time to stop doing this and go and do something else. Well, if my dog does not get fed, guess what? You know, that's it for her, right? So I had to find ways to use technology to remind me to feed her. Now, it's not that she's ignored, right? Because my brother, it's, it's a family dog, and my brother takes care of her and everything. So I would have to, I set up this experiment. So my black bear beeps every day at a certain time to go and feed her and everything. And then I'm now at the stage with my mother where she now feels guilty. Because she's like, well, you could allow me to feed her sometime. <laughs> So we're now having a conversation about that. So that's how it just changed the dynamics.